KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. And brought to you by Matson and the Adahi Tanu Program. Cars Plus, reminding you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Straight ahead on Primetime, Chris Barnett's downtown and brings you the very latest from a meeting of the Guam Election Commission. Also tonight, we'll give you an update on mitigating dengue fever on Guam. And also tonight, gas prices locally up 15 cents. Find out why coming up. Hafele and good evening everyone. The Guam Election Commission Board is meeting at this hour, expected to be discussed, a complaint against Congressman Michael St. Nicholas alleging campaign finance violations. Our Chris Barnett joins us now from Haganya. Chris? Uh, we don't know how much uh, discussion will center on the complaint that was filed against Congressman uh, Mike Sinicholas. Uh, was, uh, we previously reported uh, that complaint alleging uh, campaign finance violations uh, in the Congressman's congressional uh, campaign uh, finance uh, filings. Uh, so we don't know if the board meeting today is going to kind of be an official handover of that complaint uh, from the GEC staff uh, to the board. Uh, we're told that you know any uh, investigation and any look into this complaint will happen after tonight's uh, board meeting. Uh, another subject that will be touched on is voting where you live. There's a gentleman who has uh, made a complaint with the Guam Election Commission after he uh, re-registered to vote with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, they find out what village uh, he lives in and he wasn't voting in that village and this is a part of a, a big effort for the GEDC to kind of reconcile uh, voter registration to uh, really push that people need to vote uh, in the villages uh, that they live in and so uh, that's what we're expecting uh, tonight as always uh, this story will be developing we'll have more tomorrow night on uh, KUAM News thank you thanks Chris for that report we'll have more from the GEC meeting tomorrow on prime time Efforts to fight the bite continue today with more crews heading to the identified high-risk areas for dengue mitigation work. Partnering up with the public health are the Department of Agriculture, Guam Police and Animal Control Officers who will be assisting with stray animals. Their objective remains focused on education, outreach and mitigation spraying to reduce the potential spread of the dengue virus. Guam Homeland Security Office of Civil Defense Public Information Officer Jenna Bloss. Teams that are going out with public health will be um, equipped with nurses that are able to answer questions and provide some information regarding dengue and to see if they're able to spray in those locations. Bloss says four teams were canvassing Swamp Road in Dededo and in Mangila they expect to spray approximately 22 homes, weather permitting, to mitigate any vectors or mosquitoes in the area. But Blas says there are still challenges. Some homes that they weren't able to reach in the high-risk area in Mingilao. Um, so they continue their outreach, their efforts there as well to pass out pamphlets, get information out to those people and let them know exactly what they can expect and, and, and they can see those teams in those areas. She says residents in the high-risk areas have been mostly receptive, but some have opted out of the spraying. Blas reminds the public that this is a community effort and together we can help to fight the bike. An arrest warrant was this, executed this week for a man charged with possession of methamphetamine with intent to distribute. Portions of the case against Brian Sanchez Chan have been sealed or not available for public viewing. He appeared before a federal magistrate's judge and was appointed a federal public defender. Chan is scheduled for a bail hearing on Friday. And an arrest warrant was issued for another man, Victor Abisha Regis, on the same charges of possession of methamphetamines with intent to distribute. During a magistrate's hearing, attorney Jeffrey Moots was appointed to represent Regis. A bail hearing was scheduled for September 23rd. And in still more court news, although a jury found two brothers guilty of several charges for the Mangila Machete attack, motions for acquittal have been filed. Jordan Rashalap and Emmanuel Resalap were found guilty on September 6th on various charges. Starting with Rashalap, his attorney Gloria Rudolph filed a motion for acquittal based on multiple issues including allegations of absence of competent evidence, neglect, neglectful investigation by police and conflicting witness testimony. Attorney Sam Tecker represents Resalap. He's filed a motion for acquittal for aggravated assault because the jury was not unanimous in its verdict. Initially, both attorneys moved right. from this trial. The court, so, you know, prior to the return of the verdict, uh, when, um, you know, I moved, we, I moved for a mistrial, and I think that and, uh, Ms. Uh, Rudolph did too as well with respect to uh, the, uh, 
uh, the jury coming back and, and, and disclosing their balloting. Um, I've done some research on it, and I was going to file a motion with respect to that, but I've, I've decided not to. Uh, Judge Vern Perez scheduled a motion hearing for October 10th. The government has two weeks to file a response to both of the defense's motions. For now, Resalop and Rechalop are still scheduled to be sentenced on December 12th. An 18-year-old man has been charged in connection to the riot Tuesday at Tizen High School involving at least 40 students. Sarsan Robert was charged with criminal mischief and underage consumption of alcohol. When interviewed, he reportedly said he had bought liquor from a store and that he, quote, he and his boys had been drinking it in the school. Also detailed in the magistrate's complaint was that Robert broke away from school aides and before they were able to restrain him again, he punched the fire alarm which, mounted, which was mounted in housing on the wall. Six, six students were injured in the riot, which occurred during a lunch break. The AG's office confirms that four minors were taken into custody and are with the juvenile division. Meanwhile, a separate riot at John F. Kennedy High School Thursday remains under investigation. Accused of punching and strangling a woman before threatening to kill her, police arrest Vince Joseph Chigina Uggen after the victim reported the alleged assault, which took place on Tuesday. Court documents state Uggen was drunk on September 17th when he pushed the victim several times in the chest. While she bent over to pick up clothes, he allegedly stepped on her neck. Uggen is further accused of pushing and punching the victim before strangling her. The victim then locked herself in the bathroom, and that's when alleged, Uggen allegedly used a kitchen knife to bang on the door and threaten to kill her. He was charged with strangulation, terrorizing, and family violence. A military couple whose son was born in 2014 at the Naval, Naval Hospital on Guam has been awarded an $11.5 million settlement in a medical negligence lawsuit. According to an article in the Navy Times, the federal government agreed to the payment, which will go toward the care of the child who reportedly suffers from severe and permanent brain damage. The family now lives in Virginia. And gas prices are up 15 cents a gallon. Mobile was the first to raise pump prices, and Shell and 76 have followed suit. A gallon of regular unleaded is now just under $4.25. Fuel companies here typically do not publicly discuss such increases, but the rise follows widely reported news of attacks that destroyed several key oil fields in Saudi Arabia, which is a major supplier of global oil. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're going to be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're going to be here. We're your hometown carrier and that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that a hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. Hop the day, I'm in the club. Hoffa Day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Hoffa Day, I'm in the club. Now there's a technology that's lighting the way to a new mortgage for people all across Guam. Introducing Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii, Hawaii's leading lender. Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii lets you apply for a home loan anytime from any device, making the mortgage and refi process faster and easier. Or work hand-in-hand -hand with one of our residential loan experts. So put the power of choice and control in your hands. Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii. Welcome to tomorrow. 
at the mall as you enjoy your shopping, dining, or entertainment. You could also win three great cars from Atkins Kroll and thousands of prizes in Micronesia Mall's Cars, Prizes, and Getaways game. Present your mall receipts and have a chance to win the renowned performance Chevrolet Camaro, the unapologetic rugged Toyota 4Runner, or the head-turning Lexus ES350 Luxury. Getaways to Manila, courtesy of Philippine Airlines, plus prizes from Foot Locker and Burger King. The more you shop, the more chance to win in Micronesia Mall's Cars, Prizes, and Getaways game. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. The Guam Rugby Club is scrumming to maintain use of the easement at their Dededo field. Julio Sanchez explains how the Land Trust Commission is, is asking the club to give up the access way or risk the renewal of their 20-year lease. In 1997, the Guam Rugby Club, or GRC, adopted their field and another piece of property via GovGuam's Adopt-a-Park program. Since then, the GRC has invested in and utilized the Wedding Gale Rugby Field to foster programs for middle and high school students, as well as providing a place for our island's national team to prepare when representing Guam on the international stage. Since then, it has become a stomping ground for more than 10,000 players, young and old, and now because of a dispute made by an adjacent tenant, the club may lose access temporarily. In 2002, the land in question was transferred to the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. At same year, the GRC was granted a 20-year license based on a master plan that included an agreement in which the leaseholders of the neighboring field agreed to joint access via Santa Monica Avenue. An amendment was added to the CLTC license for the agreement in 2010. The access point is for players, spectators, and emergency responders. When the GRC submitted their five-yearly renewal request in 2017, the CLTC advised the rugby club that it would renew the lease under the condition that the 2010 amendment and public access way agreement be deleted, which the club declined. Last year in May, the rugby club was notified by the CLTC that they move forward with deleting the access agreement anyway. The GRC is contesting this as their legal counsel informed the Land Trust Commission this afternoon they violated the law by not allowing proper representation by the rugby club. Representatives from the GRC expressed that the commission's decision to eliminate the public access point is not in the best interest of the community at large and that the field is an invaluable asset not only to rugby players but also to the island of Guam. To date, the GRC has invested approximately $700,000 into developing the infrastructure, including a water line, the field itself, a clubhouse, lights, generator, maintenance of the field, and even fencing for Wedding Gale Elementary School. The nearly $1 million investment does not include the countless hours of volunteer work by members of the rugby community in the process. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Julia Santos. The Port Authority of Guam Board today voted to approve moving forward with two projects. Port GM Rory Respicio tells KUAM an award was granted to NC Mahario for concrete hardening projects in the port yard. The $340,000 bid award will cover work for load centers, smokestacks, roll-up doors and leaking transformers. The port was also green-lighted to move forward with the Hotel Wharf Rehab Project and the board approved $65,000 for its owner agent engineer for supper services on wharf projects. Legal matters scheduled to be discussed in executive session according to the meeting agenda were tabled until the next meeting. Port Legal Counsel Joseph McDonald was out sick and a legal counsel must be present when legal matters are discussed according to Respicio. Clarification on Guam's government claims process and mandatory malpractice arbitration law provided today during an informational hearing chaired by Legislative Health Committee Chair Senator Therese Turlahi. Deputy AG Ken Arcutt gave a timeline and procedural breakdown of GovGuam's Claims Act, and Attorney Mitch Thompson, who represents several health care providers, spoke on Guam's old malpractice law struck down by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in 1984 and current law, which calls for mandatory arbitration before a malpractice claim can be brought to court. If an arbitration decision is appealed and lost, the losing party must pay the winning party's legal fees, which Thompson said can sometimes run upwards of $150,000. We'll have more on this hearing tomorrow. A second satellite launch of British billionaire Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit business will take place from Guam in the next few months. A report by the Asia Times says the Launcher One system test will be the first Air Force launch for the company. As we reported earlier this year, Virgin Orbit representatives met with Adeloop officials to discuss the possibilities of using Guam as a hub for its satellite launches. 
To improve public access to the mounting information on the Guam military buildup, Speaker Tina Munya Barnes is providing a central location for people to search documents and provide input both online and in person. There are a lot of information that has been, uh, that is uh, recorded and uh, has been compiled. Data has been uh, forthcoming, but yet there's a lot of information on a lot of different websites, a lot. But how can we bring that all together? A couple of desks, one with a laptop, the other with a desktop computer, have been set up at the Speaker's office. The stations are for those who wish to make public comments or review build-up-related documents, which will be compiled on the legislature's website under directories. Two PA memos, one relative to a water well field on Anderson, the other for an urban training facility that will result in the closing off of a popular GIGO exercise area. The deadline for commenting on these projects is October 9th. We have uh, worked on compiling all the data as far back as 2011. Again, working closely with Joint Region Marianas, that all the information they have that can be shared with us will be shared and will be loaded up into this, uh, this uh, workstation. The computer stations will be available for public use weekdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The directory can be found at guamlegislature.com under the Directories tab. The University of Guam has been awarded a $2.3 million grant from the National Science Foundation. It's to help grow the uh, number and diversity of students who are interested in careers in science, technology, engineering, or math fields, or STEM. The $9 million NSF award is part of the $17 million in total grant funding managed by UOG. It received funding for a two-year pilot program in 2017. A new program will start in November and continue for a five-year period providing marine and environmental science opportunities for more than 95 high school students, undergraduates, graduate students, and early career professionals. And UOG President Dr. Thomas Kreis offered a brief lesson on the school's five-year strategic plan to the Rotary Club today. The vision statement is transforming lives, advancing communities. Kreis uh, explained the plan's six strategic initiatives, including number one, the things that are worth mentioning, particularly to this audience, are the, the desire for the university to be recognized as a research university. So the, in, the, the increase in serious research and the attraction of serious research money to the University of Guam is a very dramatic story that I think even inside the university we're not as aware of as, as we should be, and, and I think uh, the community needs to know that too. He says the second key initiative is leading as a partnership university. He says as a land-grant institution, partnering with the community is very much a part of the DNA of UOG. Dr. Kreis is the 11th president of the school and recently celebrated his first full year. He is a graduate of the Air Force Academy and holds a Ph.D. from the University of Chicago and two master's degrees from the University of Minnesota and Central Michigan University. Sports is next. Please keep it here. Make every day a plus.